Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Heather and on this channel I talk all about faith-based dating and relationships and how to prepare for a healthy kingdom marriage. So if you're interested in those topics, then be sure to hit that subscribe button and stick around. All right, so in today's video, we're going to be talking about some limiting beliefs that may be keeping you single. So you may be asking yourself, okay, Heather, what is a limiting belief to begin with? So I looked up a few different definitions and my favorite one was this one. Limiting beliefs are the stories we tell ourselves about who we are that hold us back from becoming who we are meant to be. These beliefs limit us from reaching our full potential. They are often subconscious. We don't even know that we have them until someone points them out to us. So these are beliefs that you hold that may actually be obstacles to attracting your ideal partner. These beliefs actually work against you. And the thing is, they become so familiar to you that you don't even realize that you have them. Most of these beliefs are ingrained in us and they actually become part of our story without us even realizing it. So to give you a better idea of this, let's go over some examples of what some limiting beliefs that you hold about yourself and your dating life might be. So one that I've heard a lot is that my city is too small. I live in a small town or my city is too big. There are so many people that I don't know how to meet the right person. Another example would be all men are the same or all men are jerks or there are no good men left or there are no single men where I live or there are no single men in my church. Another one might be that I'm just bad at dating or choosing men or another one that I hear a lot and that I struggled with a lot was just the belief that you're not enough, that you're not good enough, you're not smart enough, you're not pretty enough, you're not whatever enough to attract the right person. But the thing is, if you are thinking this way, you are literally talking yourself into not achieving the kind of relationship that you're wanting. Your brain actually processes about 70,000 thoughts a day. So if all of those thoughts are negative and telling us the same story over and over again, then we start to believe it. So we have to start by changing our self-talk. What are we telling ourselves about our life and our situation? about who we are and about what we want. The Bible talks about taking our thoughts captive. And there's a reason that that is in the scriptures because it is so important. Like I said, we process over 70,000 thoughts a day. That's a lot of thinking. And I think God knew that this was going to be a struggle for us, especially for us as women, because we do tend to think a little bit more about things and analyze things a little bit more and really like think into things more than a man might. And what starts to happen is the more that we tell ourselves these things and the more that we have these thoughts and beliefs, the more they start to influence our actual decisions. So for example, if you have the belief that all men lie or all men cheat, and then you date a man and he lies to you or cheats on you, then it in turn reinforces that belief. Then you start to make decisions based on that belief. You might start to avoid dating altogether, or you might become more standoffish in your dating relationships because of those reinforced beliefs. For years, my story was that I was not thin enough to attract the right kind of man. And this belief became so strong in me that it actually led me to struggling with eating disorders, um, with body dysmorphia, and not even realizing how far I was taking it um, in an unhealthy direction. And it was only amplified anytime I was rejected by someone, I would go back and think, oh, it's because of this belief. It's because I'm not you know, thin enough. I don't have the right body that they want. And so then it would spiral into this vicious cycle of going back to those eating disorders and not being able to see myself for how I really was. So this is a little bit of an extreme example, but that's just to give you an idea of what can happen when we have these strong beliefs and we don't even realize that they have taken root in us and that they have started to influence our decisions. So how do we change our limiting beliefs? Well, the first thing is to be honest with ourselves and identify them. Sometimes we're able to do this on our own and sometimes it takes talking to a close friend or family member and asking them to help us identify them because sometimes, like I said, it becomes so ingrained in us and so much a part of our story that we don't even realize they're there. So sometimes it can take really stepping back and self-reflecting or 
asking someone to come in and, and point them out to us. And I know that can be really scary to ask someone that type of thing and it's scary to hear the answer, but much better to find out so that you can fix it than to avoid it altogether. And then the second thing is you have to want to change them. No one's going to do it for you. And if you don't want to change, then you're not going to. So once you figure out what those beliefs are that you're holding on to, then you have to have the desire to change them. And number three is to ask yourself what evidence exists to support those beliefs that you have. So for example, if your belief is that my town is too small to meet anyone, what evidence is there to support that? Really think about how true that belief is. And I think most times that when we dive into that and really start breaking these things down, we'll realize that our beliefs are not accurate at all. And number four is to replace that belief with the truth. So for example, if your belief is that there are no good men left, you can replace that with there are plenty of good men out there and I will position myself to meet them. So I actually have an action step for you in this video and that is to sit down and write out what you think your limiting beliefs are and how they may be affecting your dating life. And then I want you to replace those beliefs with the truth and with something positive. And you may be thinking that sounds silly and that's okay, but I'm telling you, your beliefs really do matter and they really do influence your decisions. It can be something that seems so small, but after you've believed it for so long, it becomes bigger and bigger in the way that it influences your life without you even realizing it. And at the end of the day, you are in control of the beliefs that you choose to live by you have the power to change them and only you have the power to do that. So I'd love to hear any limiting beliefs that you have in your life when it comes to dating. Leave those in the comments. And if there are any other topics that you would like to hear me talk about, then definitely leave those in the comments as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.